Welcome to the interactive TNA review, where you, the viewer, has complete control over what I say in this video. I don't recommend you watch this entire video straight through because it's going to be all over the place, but what I do recommend is that when the time comes, you decide how I'm going to review a segment. And I'm always open to suggestions you might have for options that I should include in future interactive reviews. Now then, there's a lot of debate over the state of TNA right now and the decisions they've been making. What would you say the overall state of TNA has been? I'm really starting to regret getting Bound for Glory tickets before I got SummerSlam tickets because SummerSlam looks like freaking WrestleMania right now and I have to struggle just to get those tickets because I already spent money on Bound for Glory which from the looks of it is gonna end up being the worst freaking show of all time! TNA is in such a crappy state right now, not just on TV, but behind the scenes too. They treat their talent like crap, half their roster is dying right now, their highest paid workers are getting arrested every five minutes, and the company can't even afford entrance videos anymore. Maybe Bruce Pitchard wasn't the problem, maybe it's just TNA themselves that don't know how to put on a watchable product, because this crap has been going on for years. The exact same complaints that I've been making since last year are still there. Don't believe me? Well, you can go ahead and hit that instant replay button right there and compare everything that I said back then to the state of TNA now. And I guarantee you'll see no difference. Alright, suit yourself then, but I'm not going to go into that again because the show is so bad, I don't even need to explain why it's bad. You can tell just by watching five seconds of it just how bad it is. And just look at the whole MMA situation right now. They brought in some random MMA guy that no one knows, and it's pretty obvious that that whole situation was... Let me tell you what I used to love about TNA. They used to have a little something for everyone. The perfect mix of wrestling, entertainment, sexiness, hardcore action characters, interesting storylines, wrestlers that you cared about. The TNA of today is nothing like that. It's been drained of all the life it used to have. Their storylines are boring, predictable, and repetitive. I mean, all you gotta do is look at each of their divisions to see how screwed up their roster is. They don't have a tag team division anymore. They have two real tag teams. That's, they don't have an X division anymore, it's just random guys that we know nothing about that show up on TV occasionally and get squashed by whoever the champion is. In just one year, they lost double the amount of knockouts that they have left on their entire roster right now, and they're going to continue to lose more. Their main event scene has gone and dough. I mean, they have the right talent, but the booking is just bland, uninteresting, and repetitive. It's just the same feuds over and over and over again. Then on occasions you'll get a mid-card feud that's not for a title that ends up just being a waste of time. That's the TNA we have today. The Bound for Glory series was just an excuse to waste TV time and compensate for their lazy creative team's lack of ideas. Just like usual, they'll present something that's interesting and different, but eventually find a way to drain that idea of all the life it used to have. That's part of why I don't care much for all these up-and-coming stars, because once they reach a certain level at TNA, they're not going to get any more interesting. Hell, most of them aren't even interesting now no matter what they do. But just look at their gut check segments. In six months, they've had one standout performer. That's it. Everyone else that tried out is forgettable. And you can argue that WWE is worse. But the difference is, I care about more than just three people in WWE. And just look at the whole MMA situation right now. They brought in some random MMA guy that no one knows. And it's pretty obvious that that whole situation was... So goddamn stupid. When is TNA gonna get it through their thick freaking skulls that this crap never works? It never freaking works! Your ratings will always be at 1.0 forever, ever, ever, ever. Nothing you do will ever change that. To all the people trying to say, oh, well, it's Spike TV's fault. They're just trying to promote Bellator. TNA had nothing to do with it. What? Fucking difference does it make whose fucking fault it is? That doesn't change the fact that it's still happening on TNA TV, and it doesn't change the fact that it's a waste of freaking time! So quit acting like I'm supposed to be happy about it just because it's not TNA's fault! Who the hell is this guy anyway? What the hell can he even do? He can't even cut a decent freaking promo! 
well. It is so stupid because nothing is going to come out of this. MMA fans aren't going to start watching TNA because they're MMA fans. The only reason they watch MMA is because it's not fake wrestling. And wrestling fans aren't going to watch MMA because MMA is freaking boring compared to fake wrestling. It's not going to have an effect on the ratings. It's not going to provide entertaining TV. It's not going to benefit either company. This was literally the worst possible thing that they could have done because there's absolutely no positives to this at all. The only thing that this is doing is pissing TNA fans off. This is exactly why TNA will always be WWE's bitch because of crap like this. Whatever, let's move on to the rest of the show where the only thing that there was to talk about was the Bound for Glory series. And so far, this whole thing has been... My immediate reaction to this was, I don't care. And I still don't care. But the fact is, I wouldn't have cared regardless who it was. Because realistically, what free agent is there right now that TNA could have brought up that would have been a big deal there's no one that's why when i first saw the august one package i knew from the beginning no matter who they brought in it was going to be a disappointment you know tna can't do what wwe does when wwe does this sort of thing it really keeps you guessing you know it's going to be a big deal tna can't do that so the fact that they even tried it they already set themselves up for disappointment and since my standards were so low I wasn't disappointed by this at all. Well, I mean, at first, I didn't even know who the guy was. I was like, oh, yay, it's some random indie guy. But no, it's another MMA guy, which is probably worse than the random indie guy because at least the random indie guy would be able to wrestle and have storylines, whereas this MMA guy can't do anything. He can't even cut decent promos, for Christ's sake. But it's really like, whatever. You know, TNA has done this a million times. It's never worked any of those times, but who cares? You know, this is just another part of the show that we can all just skip over every week. If it makes TNA happy, thinking that this is a big deal, and if it makes Spike TV happy, really thinking that this is going to do anything when it's not, then good for them. I don't care, and I don't think anyone else should either. Anyway, let's get on to the night show. So the only real talking points that I guess you could make out of the show were from the Bound for Glory series tonight. So, what would you say the Bound for Glory series has been like as of lately? I guess when you overlook all the problems with TNA, the overall product isn't that bad. I mean, everything that fans have been asking for, well, every fan other than me, we're getting right now. The push of new guys, better matches, not as much focus on Hulk Hogan, and Gail Kim in the spotlight because I know internet fans can't get enough, she deserves to be in the spotlight all the time. But there's a lot of positives to TNA. The only problem is that the negatives tend to overshadow the positives because the positives aren't that impressive enough to be able to make up for most of the crap that really pisses you off. You know, TNA is sort of going through a transitional phase right now where they're just barely starting to make improvements, but not quite. And that's why it's easy to overlook any of the good that they're doing right now, because most of the bad crap they do has a stronger effect than the good that they do. You know, it's sort of like when you accidentally bite into something that tastes like dog crap. You can try and rinse it out all you want, but in the end, you're still going to have the taste of dog crap in your mouth. That's not going to go away. That's what TNA is like right now. And one example of that is the whole... MMA guy, I keep forgetting his name, I don't care, but that whole situation got a lot of people riled up last week. You know, people saying that's the final nail in the coffin for TNA, and in your opinion, is it really that bad? Is it any coincidence that the most boring time to be a TNA fan is during the Bound for Glory series? Seriously, wrestling could not possibly get any more stale and boring than the Bound for Glory series. This is like a prime example that you always use whenever you want to defend something that sucks. It's like, oh man, Hornswoggle won the raw title. Well, at least it's not as bad as the Bound for Glory series. That's literally what it's like. This whole series is nothing but a waste of time. You get 
three, maybe four good matches out of the entire thing, but the rest of it is just pointless filler garbage that we shouldn't even give a damn about because we know that ten of these guys have absolutely no chance of winning. So screw all of this, let's just hop into the knockout portion of the show, which, once again, saw Fail Kim weasel her way back into a knockout title match. And you guys know that when it comes to Fail Kim, I'm her number one. This was a fairly good week for the BFG series. Matches weren't all that bad. Mr. Kennedy was all over the first hour, so he looked like a big deal tonight. And they actually used the point system in unique ways. You know, Bobby Roode was smart. He realized that, oh crap, this guy's getting too far ahead. I'll never catch up to him. I should cost him some points. I never understood why no one ever did that before. You can use the point system in all sorts of ways, but no one seems to do that. But now you have guys starting to get smarter, starting to use the point system to their advantage. And it makes for interesting TV. How about that, huh? And now we have the reformation of the 4chan group. Which, from the looks of it, looks like it could end up being... It's obvious that this group is going to crumble apart before the end of this thing because of all their egos, but as a temporary thing to help boost interest back in the BFG series to make us think that a stable is going to start taking over the whole thing, it works. And these are the most entertaining guys on the roster, and based off tonight, they're the smartest guys on the roster, so this should be entertaining either way. So let's move on to the knockout segment of the night, where, once again, the knockout champion and the championship challenger are both overshadowed in favor of Fail Kim. And you guys know that when it comes to Fail Kim, I'm her number one. TNA seems to have this obsession with factions. They just have to have a faction in everything. And this is another pointless faction because we know damn well none of these guys are going to win. These are pretty much the jobbers of the BFG series too. All they need is Abyss and Chris Benoit, aka the broomstick guy. So yeah, this is just another pointless faction and another pointless filler thing for the BFG series, but whatever. So let's move on to the knockout segment of the night, where, once again, the knockout champion and the championship challenger are both overshadowed in favor of Fail Kim. And you guys know that when it comes to Fail Kim, I'm her number one. <laughs> I was worried that TNA was really gonna center the show around the knockout champion, but they didn't even get to wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> Serves them right for taking the precious TV time from Gail Kim. Gail is so underrated. She's such a great wrestler, but TNA continues to push other knockouts other than her. That makes no sense. I mean, she puts her body on the line. That's why I'm glad Angelina Winter, Rosita, Sarita, Madison Rain, and Taylor Hendricks all got fired because they don't put their bodies on the line like Gail Kim does, so they don't deserve to be in the company as much as she does. TNA should just fire everyone else and make Gail Kim the TNA champion already because she earned it by being a great wrestler. Anyway, that just about concludes this edition of the Interactive TNA Review. And if you'd like, you can go back and try out different options. I've made sure to include a few hidden options as well that you wouldn't get in both portions of the review. So you can go ahead and try that out for yourself. Anyway, this has been MTO with the MTO More Review saying yada yada yada, blah blah blah, the end. The only redeeming quality to this is that they're getting this out of the way early so that Phil can stay the fuck off bound for glory. 
But knowing TNA's gay obsession with this bitch, it's just gonna lead to her getting even more fucking feud handed to her. Wow. Remember when she was champion for nine months? Remember how every other heel knockout got fired because TNA couldn't fit them into a feud with her? How come it was so impossible for TNA to come up with any storyline ideas for any of their other knockouts back then that didn't involve the title, yet today, Phil Kim is still the only knockout that can get a decent feud even though she hasn't been champion for a fucking year? Why is it that she's the only knockout that doesn't need the title to be the center of the division? You know, and people say Velvet Sky played politics just because she won the belt once, even though Fail King was still overshadowing her. And people say the Bellas used politics just because they're on TV. But oh, Fail Kim, she earned everything she got. Whatever, fucking marks. So that just about concludes this edition of the Interactive TNA Review. And if you'd like, you can go back and try out different options. I've also made sure to add a few hidden options as well that you wouldn't get in both portions of the review. So you can go and try that out for yourself. Anyway, this has been MTO with the MTO More Reviews saying yada yada yada, blah blah blah, the end.